Hey, what's going on guys? Matt back here with another tutorial and today we're going to be looking at creating an inventory. So first things first, I'll show you what it does. So if I hit play, you'll see I've got a grid here and items are going to start popping in. So what I've got is a script set up that's just adding items randomly between these two items. I've got maximum stack sizes for the items and you can also drag them around inside the inventory as well and this, you can add to the stacks and things like that. So let's jump into the scripts and I'll show you what's going on in there. First things first is the actual inventory script itself. Now that's got an import system collection to generic. You need that to be able to use the list that I've got for the game objects there. And then I've also got an ex execute and edit mode so I can just see what's going on down here for my grid that I've got for the inventory. And then I've got a boolean for the inventory on which you would call from your player when you press I or E or whatever you wanted to be able to show the inventory. Now next down is our list of game objects. Now this is something I haven't covered before, but effectively it's like a, it's like an array which I'm pretty sure I've covered before. It's a better use for game objects when you're adding and removing game objects quite frequently. And then after that we've got a texture array, so that's my textures, and then texture, and then I've got an object stack integer array, and then drag object game object, drag object holder game object, and then the drag stack and drag stack holder integers. And I'll explain what they do in a minute. So inside our start function, which is called right at the start obviously, and then it's called and then you call it every time you do any changes to the inventory. So that has a for loop in it that goes for our objects count, so that's the objects that we have in our inventory. For every one of them, it checks if there is actually an object there rather than it being an empty point, then it creates the texture for the object, which we set inside our other script here, which I'll go over in a minute. And then going down to our on GUI, so this is the kind of bigger section and what this has inside it is if inventory is on which I've got set to always on just because of the tutorial that I have at the moment doesn't have any other aspects to the game and then we have a length of our buttons which is 50 for mine it can be whatever you want it to be and then I've got a GUI layout begin vertical so this is similar to in the options menu how we had the list of the different quality settings and then we've got a for loop for our buttons, so that's for our 50 buttons, it goes through, so it goes through 50 times, and for each of them it creates a button that is relative to the screen width and the screen height. So no matter what size screen you've got, they're always going to be the right shape. So we've got our screen width divided by 4, which is obvious, um, but that's plus the I, which is effectively going to multiply like which button we're doing at the moment. Say we're on button 46. It would divide it by 10 to get down to 4.6, but because it's an integer, it would just take it down to 4. And then we multiply that by 10 again, so that goes back up to 40. So then uh, it chooses, it goes 40 along the point that we're at. And obviously that, sh that changes because it uses the I that we've got here for the number of buttons. So moving on, we then times that by our screen width divided by 20 just to get it to a useful position. And then we do a similar thing with our height. Apart from we multiply it by our screen width divided by 20, so then we have it in sections going downwards as opposed to across. And then we have the sizes of our buttons as screen width divided by 21, just because that was a useful number for me. You can set it to whatever you want, so you can have it positioned wherever you want on the screen. You just need to change the the numbers within here. And then that they display my textures I, so that that's what the most useful part of the start function does where it relates a texture to the object. So those are kind of the same no matter what because they're always updated. And then inside that we've got another if statement. So if we press on one of those buttons then if the button that we're already using is the object that we're dragging, so say if we're dragging one stack on top of another of the same item and the stack number of the item that we're clicking on added to the stack number of the item that we're dragging is less than or equal to the maximum amount that that item can hold which is in, inside the info script which I'll go over in a minute then our object stack adds the stack from our drag and then it effectively it drops our the items that we're holding onto that item that sets the drag stack back to zero this is just resetting everything and then it calls our start function just to refresh the inventory for us to look at because it refreshes the textures and then we add a break and what that does is that ends the for loop there so it won't carry on and do this and it won't do any more items because we've then pressed the button. Next we're going to move on to the part after that so if it isn't the same item that has a stack available then 
If it doesn't equal the same that our item is, then it puts our drag object into a holder position. It also does the same with the stacking as well, so that's for the amount of items per stack that that has. And then it changes our drag object and our drag stack to the ones that we've pressed on. So that effectively picks up the item after storing the ones that we're holding at the moment. And then if there is actually an item that we're holding, it drops them down. And if there isn't an item that we're holding, then it sets everything to null and zero there for the stacking. And then it calls the start function and then cl cleans up the inventory images again. Also inside the floor, it displays the items count as well if it's more than one. So if we've got more than one of, of, of the item that it's going through at the moment within our for loop for creating the buttons, it then creates a label that is effectively the same as the button, but it shows the my object stack and then I inside the square bracket to show the item that it's on at the moment. And then we end the vertical array of buttons. And then if we have a drag object, it displays the both the drag ob object texture and the stacking of the drag object over our mouse so it's moving along with our mouse and then we close everything inside the GUI and the GUI itself. Finally at the bottom we've got a function that we've created ourselves called add item and inside that we set we pass through a game object from whatever it is that we are sending an item to the inventory from so say if we pick up an item we would call this and add an object there and that's inside this script and I'll go through that in a minute. So inside here we've got another for loop and that for loop has a, it uses my objects count and it, so it goes through every item that we have in our objects which you set yourself before the game starts. And then inside that we've got an if statement that goes through our items and it checks if it can stack the item to any item that's within the inventory. It goes to the item that the for loop is at at the moment. If that is equal to the item that we're adding and the stacking is the same, similar to what we did earlier, and the st stacking is less than that of our maximum stack, then we add our item and we break the for loop. If it isn't, as long as we aren't at past the count of our game objects list, and our game object that we're on at the moment inside our for loop is null, it then calls an, another for loop, so um, the objects count again, but if the object is null, then it creates the stack, and so it sets the stack to one effectively, and it sets the item that we have as the item that we have added to the inventory. It calls the start function to then refresh the uh, textures and then it breaks the for loop so it doesn't need to keep checking. So that's everything inside the inventory script. I hope you've been able to follow along. Next we have our item info which is a very short script. We don't even really need these functions. So at the moment all I've got is the texture for the item and the maximum amount that, that can stack. So say if it's a weapon you would only want it to stack once. If you had uh, and you would set the texture to whatever texture you would want and you do that within within the inspector menu and then I've just got a little setup here that effectively is spawning a random item between two every second so I've got my item game object there it's got the camera that is my scripts is attached to so that's where it sends my items to and I set that at the start and then I invoke repeating random chance which is my function down here after one second it will do it every second and then inside that we've got an if statement which is a random range between 0 and 2 so that can be either 0 or 1 if it is equal to 1 then it adds item 1 and if it is equal to 0 effectively it adds item 2 and it does that by um, going through our cam object that we've set up here inside the script and then it calls the function add item and it passes item 2 there or item there and then that goes through onto our script that we have here and it calls everything. So just for a little bit of setting up, I've got my prefabs here, which are the items, and they both have their own texture attached to it and its maximum stack is 10. And then I've got a cube here, which has a different texture and its maximum stack is 64. If I then play it, it will add one and then another. So every second it's adding another number. I can drag, I can click and take them around. So that's got five, that's only got one. That's got two. Then I can stack it again to five if I want. 
I can stack them so it's at 10. And then once uh, this one's at maximum stack, it will then continue adding more over here. But if, say, I have this one in that place, it will add the item to there. If I have this one in this place, it will add the 11th item to this stack here, just like that. So I hope that's useful for you guys. There's going to be more things similar to this coming out soon, so adding things to an action bar and things like that. So stick around, and I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial.